Happy Friday, everybody. You made it to the end of the week. Well, what can I say? We are just 12 days into 2024, and it is already shaping up to be quite a weird year. And we're already talking about possible alien invasions in Miami. And then, of course, this happened. Take a listen. Yep, Ninja Turtles are real. Plus, later on in the show, I hit the trail with Vivek Ramaswamy yesterday in Iowa, and I can't wait to tell you guys about that and why I am supporting him and his campaign. All that and more today coming up on Candace Owens. All right, man, I don't even know where to begin. I mean, unless... You were under a rock or potentially in a tunnel in Brooklyn. You probably did not miss this story, did not miss these clips that were circulating all over the Internet coming out of, again, Brooklyn, New York, a Hasidic Jewish sect. I I guess we should just 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 roll the footage of, of what went down. Take a look. What's going on here? (laughs) Okay. You get it. You get the picture here. Just an utterly chaotic scene that happened here. And obviously it spawned a ton of conspiracy theories. Let me tell you something as somebody who has lived in New York City uh, for seven years of my life. It ain't every day that you're walking down the street and you see a bunch of Hasidic Jews getting arrested. Right. That is obviously unique. It is obviously going to make the news, especially when you find out that they're being arrested because they dug some tunnels beneath the ground. Now, I want to be clear here of how this entire thing was spawned. This actually happened. People began calling the police because they were hearing Jews beneath their buildings. First of all, imagine the 911 call. Hello, 911, what's your emergency? I hear Jews in the basement. Completely crazy. But this is actually what went down. People were saying that they were hearing Jewish people in the basement that were speaking Yiddish. I, the cops probably thought these people were insane, were making this up. It turns out that these people were not lying. They were not making it up. And when they arrived, what you just saw is what went down. Uh, these individuals began blocking the entryway to the tunnel. Obviously, very suspect. It ended in over 10 arrests of people. I'll show you some footage now of them getting arrested uh, by the NYPD. Here is more footage of the tunnels. This is being reported by the New York Post. Take a look. So what you are seeing, in case you are listening to this podcast, is it's just a ton of boxes. It's obviously very dark. Um, It's quite extensive. And I want to be clear that these tunnels were dug illegally. Uh, There is a staircase. It is allegedly three stories of tunnel that, again, were illegally dug. So yes, these tunnels were dug under the synagogue. Again, I would like to emphasize illegally so you can completely understand why this caused a reaction on social media. It's a very strange scene. You see that there are young children in the church. There's a lot of screaming, a lot of yelling. At one point, a guy grabs his yarmulke, throws it back on his head. I mean, utterly chaotic. I first want to just point out the worst possible take that I saw on this matter. It was from a journalist that, you know, he he gets it right sometimes. This time he definitely got it wrong. Yashar Ali said this about your interest. If you thought that what you just saw was odd and weird, if you thought that the person that we just showed you 
coming out of a tunnel in New York City at the top of the show was weird. Yashar says, no, that's that. It's not weird. There's something wrong with you. You are basically anti-Semitic. He tweeted this. The bad behavior of some extremists at the Chabad and Crown Heights should have been a local news issue at most. Instead, it turned into a global anti-Semitic flood of some of the most dangerous conspiracy theories about Jews dating back to the Middle Ages. The attempt, one that shouldn't have been made and was wrong, to expand a basement has now turned into, quote-unquote, the Jews have tunnels where they are insert blood libel here. I'm seeing this spread aggressively all over the world. It's not surprising, but still depressing. Let's just focus on that, that, that second, the first line there. It should have been a local news issue at most. Wild. Absolutely insane to stay, say that. And I'm going to tell you why it's insane. I'm actually going to challenge you here. Imagine if Catholics, if there was a Catholic church, okay, and you suddenly see a bunch of bishops being arrested, mass arrested, a mass arrest took place. By the way, whenever there's a mass arrest, you can bet it's going to make national news because it's just not every day that you're seeing a ton of people being arrested at once and so much mayhem. But imagine if this was actually a Catholic church, you see a bunch of bishops being arrested. And then you find out when you're looking at the footage that they're blocking a tunnel, they're resisting arrest and not allowing the police to do their job and providing them access to the tunnel. What would have happened? It would have been a global news story. People would have been like, it's pedophilia in the Catholic Church. Oh, my God. The Pope would have had to issue a statement. That is how it would have, how viral the story would have been. He would have issued a statement. He would have come down. He would have condemned it. And still, people would have believed the conspiracy theories. Imagine if it was even something smaller. If it was Jehovah Witnesses. If it was Mormons. Imagine if out in Utah, we found out that you see a bunch of Mormon leaders in a church, Mormon or even Mormon youth in the church, so much mayhem, freaking out, resisting arrest. Then you find out they dug tunnels beneath the Mormon church. What would you have said? Oh, it must have been. It was a sex call to the Mormon people. Absolutely, something is happening here. And it, of course, would have been national news. Imagine if it was New York City and it was a mosque and there were tunnels. It would have made global news. People would have said, oh my gosh, it's a terrorist cell. What's going on here Clearly what's happening is something, get the FBI involved. We've been throwing it back to 9-11. And the only thing people would have thought of was that obviously these were jihadists that were up to no good. Remove religion from it because religion always brings with it the idea that there is some cult. It doesn't matter what religion you are, right? I don't know why people are trying to pretend that this is anti-Semitism. All religions bring the idea that there is cultish behavior that takes place within their church, their synagogue, wherever it is they practice worship especially if they're digging tunnels. Like I said, remove religion from it. Let's pretend that this was just uh, a Mexican family out in California, and you suddenly see that the police have descended, and there's a ton of Mexicans outside going, no, 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 no. And there is now a tunnel that's been exposed. What do you think? Be honest. The cartel. Obviously, there's going to be some drugs in there. Uh, clearly, this could be the only logical reason because we are relying on cultural depictions. We know that obviously the cartels did in fact build tunnels and it was to transport things illegally. Now, to be clear, when you are building illegal tunnels and you are caught on video blocking the police and you are resisting arrest because you don't want to provide them access to the tunnels, it's not because you are just up to something good. Or rather, what I should say to be clear, they weren't necessarily resisting arrest, but they were resisting the police investigation. They weren't allowing the police access to the tunnels. So again, let's just completely say to any person that is pretending that interest in this story is anti-Semitic is that you are disingenuous and you, sh you should, should not be listened to. Now, of course, what will naturally happen if people do not get answers, immediate answers, an immediate understanding of what actually took place, you are going to find a random hole of people on the internet that are going to build upon a conspiracy theory. Are there people that do, in fact, hate Catholics and Christians? Of course. Are there people that hate Jewish people? Of course. Are there people that are going to use confirmation bias when these circumstances take place uh, to further their hatred for a community of people? Of course. The only way that you are able to conquer that is with radical honesty. Every question that will pop up in your mind. By the way, the things that were being taken out of the tunnel, mattresses, stained mattresses, 
Uh, now some people are saying it's stained with blood. There's no way that anybody could know that outside of a lab that could test it. But yes, in fact, there were multiple stained mattresses that were pulled out. Yes, in fact, there were, there were baby chairs um, that were in the tunnels as well. It's going to drive people crazy unless you give them radical honesty. Instead, what was given, uh, first and foremost, a statement was issued by the Chabad Lubavitch headquarters. And I just want to say, just in case you're wondering uh, what the Chabad Lubavitch Hasidic movement is, I'll give you the answer to that. The Chabad Lubavitch Hasidic movement is an orthodox movement with roots in Eastern Europe. Brooklyn's Crown Heights neighborhood is home to roughly 20,000 strong Chabad community. And can, they actually have their own courts, their own rabbinical courts, plus a Jewish community council. So yes, they, this is a, a very strong sect in the Brooklyn Crown Heights neighborhood. They issued this statement regarding the footage, regarding people's interest in the matter. They wrote, the Chabad Lubavitch community is pained by the vandalism of a group of young agitators who damaged the synagogue below Chabad headquarters at 770 Eastern Parkway Monday night. These odious actions will be investigated and the sanctity of the synagogue will be restored. Our thanks to the NYPD for their professionalism and sensitivity. We are grateful for the outpouring of concern and for the support of our Chabad Lubavitch institutions around the world. Again, that was written by the rabbi and the chairman of the synagogue. Now, again, saying that these are young agitators does not answer all of the questions that people are naturally going to have. How were they able to dig this tunnel? You don't just do that with your hands. How are they able to break through cement and dig this extensive tunnel um, beneath the synagogue? Why did they build this tunnel? What were they agitating? Um, what, what, was the, what was the issue that was at hand that allowed this to happen? Why didn't you call the police? Why was it instead the neighbors upstairs that were hearing them that called the police? Again, the best thing to have done, in my personal opinion, would have been to have a press conference and to allow people to ask all of these questions and to provide them with all of the answers to it. And that is not obviously um, what happened here. Now let's get to what we actually know to be true about this story. And again, the reason why I waited is some people were tweeting at me like there was some conspiracy. Again, the internet is filled with conspiracies. Why aren't you covering the tunnels? It's a huge story. Yes, it was a very big story, but I wanted to wait until there were actual facts and not just people that were suspicious that pedophilia was happening in this basement. It is not always great to be first because then you may just be spreading lies. Here is what we do know um, that is true about these arrests that took place. Nine of the people that were arrested were aged 19 to 21. So yes, that fact checks true that this was a young group that was responsible for what was happening. They were arrested for criminal mischief and reckless endangerment. People that were in the Hasidic community began speaking out and they revealed how six original tunnelers, as they're describing them, most of them in their teens and early 20s, began their tunnel building operation. Here's a quote from Eaton Kalmowitz talking to the New York Post. He says, you've seen the Shawshank Redemption. That's what these young men did at first. They were just kind of trying to dig this tunnel themselves. And then they realized that the task apparently uh, was beyond them. And they organized a collection of illegal immigrants. They hired immigrant laborers, described as Mexicans, to do the job properly, to install support beams and living and sleeping on site for at least three weeks for those illegal immigrants so that their presence would not be detected. That is a big fact that is being shared there. Because if it is true, and yeah, it is also a crime, and we should definitely see these individuals prosecuted for the crime, if they were in fact harboring illegal immigrants in the tunnels, then that may provide a more logical explanation for why there were mattresses uh, beneath, right? Now, instead of thinking that there is some pedophilic ritual that is happening, you can go, okay, they're harboring illegal immigrants and their illegal immigrants are sleeping there because they don't want them to be detected. And so they gave them mattresses. Um, and again, we don't know why the mattresses were staying. Maybe they're old mattresses. Maybe they found them on the street. I don't know. Uh, this, there are plenty more questions that aren't answered, but that does maybe also give us a reason, um, an answer rather, to why you're seeing high chairs. And what we have seen in these scores of immigrants that are coming across the border, we do, of course, know that there is an illegal immigrant problem, uh, particularly in Brooklyn. We talked just earlier this week about the fact that it's raining, snowing illegal immigrants, so much so that they are now providing 
uh, the high school space to those legal immigrants so that they can be sheltered. And so you can imagine when you see them with their young kids coming across, border, coming across the border, as we have seen in so much of the footage that we have unveiled this year, that maybe some of them had family members, maybe they somehow got a high chair into there. Again, this is all me being speculative. I am just saying that we don't always need to run away with our imagination. Uh, irrespective of what happened here, it is completely weird there are still tons of answers that have uh, not been provided in my, uh, just in, in my own estimation and obviously in the public at large estimation by the synagogue headquarters there so, itself. And so this is a story that we do not know all the answers to just yet, but we will continue to follow it, uh, not because it is an act of anti-Semitism, just because it's objectively weird <laughs> to see a Hasidic Jew come out of the sewer like we showed at the top of the show. That's just weird. All right, guys, and that's all I'm gonna say about that. Balance of nature, fruit and veggies are a great way to make sure that you're getting essential nutritional ingredients every single day. Balance of nature uses an advanced cold vacuum process that encapsulates fruits and vegetables into whole food supplements without sacrificing their natural antioxidants. The capsules are completely void of additives, fillers, extracts, synthetics, pesticides, or added sugar. The only thing that is in Balance of Nature's fruit and veggie capsules are, well, fruits and veggies. Right now, not only will my listeners get 35% off your first order, you'll now also get a free fiber and spice supplement as well. Balance of Nature's fiber and spice supplement is a revolutionary fiber drink with a unique blend of 12 spices and whole foods. There's never been an easier way to make sure that you're getting your daily dose of fruits and vegetables. Experience Balance of Nature for yourself today. Go to balanceofnature.com and use promo code CANDICE for 35% off your first order as a preferred customer, plus get a free bottle of fiber and spice. That's balanceofnature.com, promo code Candice, for 35% off your first preferred order, plus a free bottle of fiber and spice. Okay, now it's time for some topics du jour. So I told you guys that I was going to be hitting the campaign trail for a day with Vivek Ramaswamy. I was so excited to do that yesterday out in Iowa. It was very cold. I just want to say this, you know, uh, I am not the person who meaningfully does presidential endorsements because there's something about it that seems arrogant to me. Like, oh, I'm endorsing this person. And so you should definitely vote for this person. No, I I want to say that I support certain individuals. And I always want to be honest with you about why I support those individuals. In, and my hope there is just that you will listen to them, that you will give them a shake, right, and come to your own decisions. And Vivek Ramaswamy is someone that caught me and my entire team completely by surprise. Obviously, you saw the genesis of it. We had him on the show. I was saying his name wrong. I was saying Vivek. His name is Vivek Ramaswamy. Didn't know much about him, and he blew me away. Um, it's not only his business acumen, his intelligence, his ability to, to relate to different people. It's also his astounding work ethic. I, I truly believe that Vivek Ramaswamy is one of those people that is just genetically gifted. His brain works in a way, and this is why he's been you know, so successful at such a young age business-wise. Um, it works faster than most human beings on earth. You know, He just uh, hit the genetic lottery, so to speak. And his ability to articulate, his ability to understand the issues, his ability to, when you tell him something, just go ahead and read a book and completely understand what's going on, close to none. I mean, really, I, I, he really is ahead of everybody else in this race and any race I've ever seen. I do think Vivek Ramaswamy is one of the most brilliant people that we have ever seen in politics. I mean that. And yesterday I did four campaign stops with him, got to see the way that he connects with people. He's running on about three to four hours of sleep. He doesn't even drink coffee. He just, just drinks tea all day, which is another phenomenon. And he he just doesn't stop. He really does not stop. He is the energizer bunny. That is just a credit to his youth, but just also to him. And so I was honored to do that. And I, I wanted to show you guys some stills of us on the campaign trail. But I also wanted you to hear what he thinks, what his election predictions are. You know, coming in as somebody who is clearly very America first, there is obviously some sort of a media conspiracy to pretend that Vivek is not running. I want to be clear, Vivek has visited... Uh, has done more campaign stops in Iowa than every other candidate combined. He is on track to do more than 350 stops in Iowa. Impressive why? Because he's actually working for our vote. And that right there is a rarity. 
right? You usually get these politicians who just assume that you should vote for them. I mean, you got DeSantis who's just like, I've got all the donor money. Nikki Haley, you don't really see her anywhere. She's got the protection of the mainstream media. And you've got Vivek Ramaswamy who is just doing good old fashioned hard work, speaking to people and explaining to them his vision for the country, his America First vision. And his prediction is that the American First movement is being duped right now. That the powers that be will stop at absolutely nothing to make sure that Donald Trump is never in the White House ever again. And obviously we are seeing that. They are just removing him from the ballot in certain states. And he thinks we're walking into a trap. Listen to what he says. The system wants to narrow this down to a two horse race between Donald Trump and a puppet who they can control. And it has become increasingly clear that puppet is not a Democrat. It's not even Gavin Newsom. It's Nikki Haley. It's in our own party. Well, today, one more step in that plot unfolds. Chris Christie drops out. Next up, I'm going to make a prediction. You're actually going to see Ron DeSantis join Nikki Haley's ticket. He's going to be her VP. The whole game, it's hiding in plain sight. Whatever it takes. And this system will stop at nothing. And I mean nothing to eliminate Donald Trump from contention. It's disgusting. But the same people who have said they're not going to actually take a principled stand against Trump's removal from the ballot. Haley and DeSantis are both in that category. Do the math, people. That's next up. Ron DeSantis is after Iowa. Everybody, including Chris Christie, apparently got a phone call from Ron DeSantis. Panicked was the word that Chris Christie used. This is the way the plot's going. Ron may not know this. Ron DeSantis may not know this. But that's what his donors are going to make him do. That's what's coming next. I would heed that warning. I I do believe that, obviously, they will stop at nothing. They've already proven that uh, to make sure that Trump is never in the White House. And what he says there is really important that they're duping us in the manner of pretending that Nikki Haley is surging in the polls, pretending that she's got this huge Republican following. I have not met a Nikki Haley supporter. I haven't. And I'm just just telling you my own experience. And yet at the end, you can see this. Go look at the, observe the media. After every debate, they're like, Nikki Haley won, Nikki Haley won. My personal litmus test is to see the candidate that the McCains are supporting and to know that you should not vote for that person because they are establishment and they are likely tied to the military industrial complex. The McCains are supporting Nikki Haley. From day one, Meghan McCain's been tweeting, Nikki Haley, she's so great, she's so brilliant. Mm Mm-mm, girlfriend, I'm not falling for it. And it turns out that neither is Rand Paul. People were speculating that he was going to make an endorsement today. He said that he had seen enough. He tweeted, you know, I've seen enough, and I'm, you know, ready to weigh in on the race. Well, he has made a declaration of sorts. He certainly has weighed in on the race. And... It is almost a non-endorsement. Take a listen. Good morning, everyone. As I told you yesterday, I'm ready to say something about the presidential race. I've had a long relationship with Donald Trump, and there's a lot to like there. I'm also a big fan of a lot of the fiscal conservatism of Ron DeSantis. I think Vivek Ramaswamy has been an important voice. Also have listened to and met with the independent Bobby Kennedy. I'm not yet ready to make a decision, but I am ready to make a decision on someone who I cannot support. So I'm announcing this morning that I'm never Nikki. I think Rand Paul is stealing my thunder. I did this. I teased an endorsement of sorts. And I also went with uh, Nikki Haley. Remember this? I am here today to endorse Nikki Haley for president of Israel. Now, obviously, I was making a joke there, but it was not a joke without merit. It was a joke that was challenging people to think about why I was saying that president of Israel, because at the time, Nikki just seemed high on the idea of war. She wanted us involved in every single conflict. Her entire feed was dedicated to telling us that we needed to be involved in this conflict. She was one of the people that was on stage uh, telling us that, you know, Ukraine, if we're, we don't, we, we can do everything. We can police the world. War, war, war. Uh, you know, America's nothing without Israel. I mean, just crazy talk, crazy talk for a person that wants to be the president of the United States. It obviously signaled to me that Nikki Haley, as Vivek pointed out from the very beginning of this, is making money in a different way, in a very John McCain way, by selling out her country to interests overseas. Again, feeding the military industrial complex. And that is exactly why Rand Paul declared that he was never Nikki. Here is a thread that he attached to that video. He wrote this on X. I've been watching the GOP primary closely for a while now, and I like various aspects of several candidates, Republicans like President Donald Trump, Governor Ron DeSantis, and Vivek Ramaswamy. I'm interested in the ideas of some independents too, such as Robert Kennedy Jr. 
As I look over the field, I don't think I yet have a first choice, but I do know one thing. Count me in as hashtag never Nikki. Based on her record and campaign, I don't see how any thoughtful or informed libertarian or conservative should vote for Nikki Haley. If you agree, let your voice be heard. Go to nevernikki.net today so we can let her and everyone else know she doesn't have your support. If you are unsure, keep reading and following. Nikki Haley supports Biden and McConnell and the forever war crowd on funding for the war in Ukraine. Her thirst for war is so strong, she actually said, quote, I'm sick of talking about a Department of Defense. I want a Department of Offense. What? Insane. She even personally received millions of dollars from the arms merchants who benefit from the war, a conflict of interest that undergirds her eagerness for foreign military intervention. This position isn't new either. As governor of South Carolina, she gave tax dollars to those same arms merchants, and they showered her with campaign contributions and a seat on their board when she left office. While most others were decrying the mistakes of the past 20 years and fighting for an American first foreign policy, Nikki Haley was aligning herself with and declaring her foreign policy allies to be John McCain and Lindsey Graham. Nikki Haley believes in nearly unlimited foreign aid. We have sent over 100 billion. We don't have to Ukraine already, and she wants more. But this also isn't new. In her book, With All Due Respect, she wrote, quote, humanitarian assistance will always be a priority for the United States. We will always be generous, end quote. But Nikki Haley's generosity with your tax dollars and her support for all foreign aid and in the context of a $34 trillion debt is in no way libertarian or conservative. Beyond the issue of endless wars, Nikki Haley's lack of respect for freedom of speech is shocking to anyone who believes in the Constitution. Nikki Haley believes that all internet posters should be registered and verified. This flies in the face of a free American republic whose founders wrote anonymously the Federalist Papers and routinely posted newspaper articles and pamphlets under pseudonyms. Anyone who doesn't fully believe in free speech or who wants endless wars has no business anywhere near the White House. But wait, there's more. Nikki Haley routinely praised the mission of the United Nations, the results they achieved, and the people who ran it. First up, her quote, I believe the UN does valuable work. By that, she means your tax dollars, since the, U since the U.S. is the primary funder of the U.N. She repeatedly praised the U.N. Secretary General, former president of Socialist International, and declared that they, quote unquote, think alike. Nikki Haley disagreed with President Trump's decision to pull U.S. troops out of Syria and Afghanistan and defended continued U.S. presence in both places. If you want to move quickly to domestic policy in South Carolina, Nikki Haley advocated for a gas tax hike a state-run vaccine registry, and never lifted a finger for school choice. I am never Nikki, and I hope that you will be too. What I will say is I am obviously in deep accordance with all of his thoughts. I do not see how any person can say that they care about this country and that they are patriotic, and in the same breath say that they are a supporter of Nikki Haley when it is so evidentiary that she believes in every other country first before the American people. That is what she believes in. That is what a lot of these people believe in. And she is, again, the lead candidate for the neocon movement, people that are pretending to be conservatives, but they're anything but. And that was one of the things I loved about supporting Vivek Ramaswamy, speaking to people on the ground. I love doing that and hearing their concerns. People are sick and tired of being told that they should not care about what's happening at the gas pump. They should not care about the prices at the grocery store. Crazy prices. I mean, you get a couple of items and you're at $150. Because no, we need to make sure that we continually fund endless wars. And I'm tired of people pretending that that somehow makes us isolationist. The American First Movement is isolationist. And well, we've been trying it your way for the last three decades, right? We've been trying it your way. Oh, America, we're, how's it been going? Are we winning? Did we win the Iraq war? Did we win the Afghanistan war? Are we winning in Ukraine? If the answer is no, then let me ask you another question. Do we have a strong military? We can't even sign people up. So guess what? Being isolationist makes sense when you have a weak army, a weak morale, and an impossible trillion dollar deficit at home that needs to be taken care of. It makes sense when you can't take care of your own home to not then say that you're going to take care of somebody else's. So yeah, America first is where it's at. I like Vivek Ramaswamy, but I also like people that have the courage to speak truth to power. Rand Paul, thank you for weighing in, in support or non-support of Nikki Haley ever. 
uh, in the United States of America. She can go be the president of Ukraine for all I care. All right, guys, I promise we would always button the show with a good news story. Shia LaBeouf, remember him, of course. He's a wonderful actor. He always has been a wonderful actor. But he has also been known as a very troubled actor. Obviously, someone who was deep into drug addiction, also likely drinking as well. And we have seen him radical. Uh, you know, he was radically anti-Trump, but in a way that let you know that something was very wrong with Shia LaBeouf. And then something happened to him. Shia LaBeouf was cast to play Padre Pio in the movie, also entitled Padre Pio. And while playing this part, he had a radical internal conversion. He became somebody different, somebody that was ready to account for his sins. He's become remarkably more private and has said that he will owe for the rest of his life for the sins that he has committed. Well, recently he announced that he is entering the Catholic Church. Yes, Shia LaBeouf has been baptized. And here is him sitting down with the man who baptized him, Bishop Barron, for a discussion regarding the plausibility of him becoming a deacon. You and the deacon show up for like this deacon's meeting. Well, that's the first time I met you, It's the first right. time I meet you. Yeah, okay. The deacons are all hanging out at the church. Right, right. And, and I feel like, oh, this is like, wow, I, I, it's amazing. I get to sit in here. And, you know, my, my like, I feel like, um, like I'm not allowed to be there. And, but then all the deacons are in, like being really warm with me. And I'm sitting in the back. It was mass first, right? It's mass. Then, yeah. We do mass. And then we go, like, have a little sandwich. Right. And you do this, you do this talk about prayer. Yeah. And how... It's really a simple uh, four-step process prayer, you know, and, and I needed somebody to simplify it for me because it felt like, one, I needed, I needed to be defined. I didn't want it to be this esoteric. I needed something very defined and very practical. I needed something very, like, boots on the ground. And you said, quiet leads to loving thoughts. Loving thoughts leads to loving action. Loving action leads to peace. And that hit me heavy. As and Mother then, Teresa I was quoting there. That's Whoever her. it was, it's yeah. changed my life. So that's the new Shia LaBeouf. Very different from the old Shia LaBeouf. And this is what happens when you find God. Uh, he has now found direction in his life, a, a life that became directionless because he became what most people become when they become obsessed with Hollywood. He became a radical leftist, searching for a spiritualism and turning to all the wrong ones because there, as I have said in the past, is no such thing as an atheist. If you have a void a spiritual void, you will fill it with something. And that something can be something evil. It can become the climate agenda, right? It, it can become any of these leftist apocalypse horsemen. The environmentalism, you're gonna fill it with that. Can you radically care about that? Feminism, I hate men, transgenderism, tons of isms that people will suddenly turn to to fill a spiritual void. Uh, and now Shia LaBeouf no longer has a spiritual void. Obviously, they're discussing the, the possibility of him becoming a deacon, from a, a lost actor to a deacon. What an in incredible journey, and it's one to watch. You should go pursue that conversation that he had with Bishop Barron. It's enlightening. It allows us to all know and remember that at any moment, we can change our lives around. That's all I'm going to say. On that topic, let's jump into some of your comments regarding episodes past. Sleep is the foundation of our mental and physical health. You must have a consistent nighttime routine to function at your very best. If you're struggling with sleep, you need to check out Beam. Beam's Dream Powder contains a powerful all-natural blend of ingredients, including magnesium L-theanine. It's not just your run-of-the-mill sleep aid. It's a concoction carefully crafted to help you rest without the grogginess that often accompanies other sleep remedies. Several people on my team here for Daily Wire use Beam's Dream Powder and are always saying how great Beam works. Today, my listeners get a special discount on Beam's Dream Powder, their best-selling hot cocoa for sleep with no added sugar. Now available in delicious flavors like cinnamon cocoa, chocolate peanut butter, and mint chip, better sleep has never tasted better. You just mix Beam Dream into hot water or milk, stir or froth, and enjoy before bedtime. If you find yourself struggling to sleep, give it a shot. Your weary self will thank you. If you want to try Beam's best-selling dream powder, take advantage of their New Year's sale for 40% off for a limited time when you go to shopbeam.com slash Candice and use code Candice at checkout. That's shopbeam.com slash Candice with promo code Candice for up to 40% off your order. So these comments are pertaining to Megan Fox's wonderful poetry. She is the new Robert Frost. I thought it was appropriate to read it to Matt Walsh. He felt like the person who needed some poetry. 
Here's what you guys had to say about it. First person says, when Megan Fox rhymed I hate men with I hate men, I felt that. <laughs> Truly, one of the poems of all time. I agree. It's hard to do that, to just rhyme a sentence with the exact same sentence, but she did it, and she is here to stay. Eagle Child writes, more Matt and Candace sessions, please. By the way, Candace, your rendition of these classical works was impeccable. Thank you very much. Yes, me and Matt do make a great team. And Matt's like a, a cat, and I just, I respond to that. I just really always want to bring him ridiculous things. And I now think that that is my duty, to find ridiculous stories and to bring them to Matt for reaction. This person, Lana, writes, Candace reading I Hate Men had me dying. Ha ha ha, I literally rewatched it. Such passion and grace. Yes, you too can own that, Lana. You can own that poetry. You can see how it hits you hard. By the time you get to the third or fourth I Hate Men, you do realize that this woman is deep. And I can see why um, Machine Gun Kelly, her fiance, described her as a genius. He has in past interviews said that she's literally a genius. And I cannot deny the facts when they are facing me in the way that they are. Lastly, this person writes, this is the type of content we need in 2024. My two favorite Daily Wire hosts discussing what truly matters. What a treat. God bless you both and your families. Thank you so much. We will take all of those blessings. I appreciate you guys enjoying that. We've been definitely keeping the show a little more lighthearted this year because you know what? It's needed. We have to kind of laugh at all the ridiculous things that are going on. Uh, it's the only way we're going to survive it, you guys. That is all the time that we have for today and thus this week. We will see you on Monday for a brand new episode.